Hi, my name is Dr. Neely Tucker. I'm a physical medicine and rehabilitation or physiatrist, as well as an interventional pain or interventional spine doctor here at Orthopedic One. I did my training at The Ohio State University for both residency and fellowship, and I currently practice out of both the Westerville and Grove City location here in Ohio. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a procedure or test that we commonly order in our practice called an EMG. An EMG actually involves two different parts. The EMG stands for electromyography, and the second part of that test, which is often done in conjunction, is the NCS or nerve conduction study. This is a test that often evaluates the function or health of the nerves and muscles throughout the body. It's most often performed by a PMNR or a physiatrist like myself or a neurologist. And on average, the test um, takes about 20 to 30 minutes to perform, but it depends on how complex the issue is. Next, I'll go over some of the conditions that are most commonly uh, diagnosed with the test. By far the most common is a condition called carpal tunnel syndrome, which you guys might be aware of. That's a condition where there's a nerve at the wrist that gets compressed and it leads to a lot of numbness, tingling, and pain going down into the hand. It can also test for other nerves in the body, such as the ulnar nerve, which is a nerve at the elbow that often gets compressed and also can lead to numbness, tingling, and pain going down to the hand. It's a test that we sometimes order for patients that might have a pinched nerve or a radiculopathy coming from their neck or low back. It's also a test that can evaluate for neuropathy, which can occur from diabetes, thyroid disorders, as well as multiple other conditions. And lastly, it's also a test that we sometimes order for patients that might have had a trauma and there's concern for some nerve injury. It can help to delineate where that nerve injury might be occurring. Finally, it's sometimes a test that we order if there's any unexplained numbness, tingling, or weakness that a patient has that does not fit any condition based on our exam or uh, prior imaging has not shown exactly what is going on. Next, I'll go over what exactly is involved with the test. So most often, the first part of the test is the nerve conduction study portion. For that part, we hook you up to some electrodes where we basically place the electrodes over different muscles on the hand and then we send an electrical stimulation into the nerve, which in turn causes the muscle to contract and we get a response on the computer. The second part of the test is the EMG portion or electromyography portion. For that, we use a fine wire or pin that we insert into different muscles and it has a recording device at the tip that allows us to see if there's any nerve damage as well as to make sure that the muscle is recruiting properly. The nerve conduction study portion of the test is often described as a rubber band snap against the skin, a TENS unit, and I like to think of it as, as when you touch someone and get that shock sensation. That's kind of what I feel like it, uh, the sensation is. The EMG portion of the test is actually very similar to acupuncture. Um, the gauge of the needle is very similar, so if that's something you've been through before, this should be a test that is well tolerated for you. A common question that I get is, is this test uncomfortable or painful? And my answer to that is it's a well and safe tolerated test um, that involves only minor discomfort. I would say for less than 1% of my patients do I have to stop the test prematurely because they are not able to tolerate it. But before I start my test for every patient, I do let them know that if at any point during the test they're not able to tolerate, we can certainly stop at that time. Next, I'll go over how you can prepare for the test. So, once your doctor orders this test and you have a date scheduled for it, the day of your procedure or immediately before the test, make sure you don't use any lotions, creams, or oils because that can affect the results of the test. You can continue all medications, including any blood thinners that you might be on. If you have a pacemaker or any other implanted device such as a stimulator, it would be a good idea to let your physician know before the start of the test but it's important to know that that does not exclude you from having the test done, and it may just limit certain portions of the test. There are no after effects after the test is completed, and you, you may resume normal activities immediately after. Last, I'll go over when you get the results or the findings from the test. So again, as I mentioned, this is a test that's most commonly done by a trained physician, and that's because we are analyzing the data as we're doing the test or the procedure. In many cases, I'm able to give my patients an idea of what exactly I'm seeing, 
Though in some more complex cases, I do let them know that I'd like to review the data a little further and I would get the final report to the referring physician. Once the test is completed, you typically have a follow-up appointment with your referring doctor who will go over the final report with you and the findings, as well as the next steps in management and treatment. I hope you found the information that we discuss on EMG useful, and I hope the next time you do have this test done, you feel more prepared for it. Thank you.